You, sir, did an unbelievable job of keeping the whole Oklahoma thing quiet. <laughs> I mean, I talked to you a lot and you never mentioned it. Can you just talk me through how that all came about and when that happened? Um, it was sometime in football season. I can't really remember when. Um, I was coming home from actually a quarterback club meeting every uh, Tuesday night. Yeah, every Tuesday night you get together and you would do exchange and there's a meal and things of that nature. And I was coming home and I just had the word missions pop into my head, um, which is very unlike me. Um, I have always, I love Lancaster County. I, I love coaching. I love being here. It's my hometown, my family, everything. So when that popped into my head, I went with my wife and my wife um, was kind of shocked as well. She goes, that, that's definitely a sign of something. We didn't know what it was, mm -hmm. but I had never talked about it, never spoke about anything like that. Because mm -hmm. um, I said, I was very, very happy at Peckway Valley. You know, we were, we were really happy with how the program was going. I, I live in the community. We love the community and just, and, and just everything about it. So um, from there, we just kind of, um, that night, I kind of laugh. I Googled. I Googled Christian school teacher in missions and uh, stumbled upon a place called Cookson Hills in Oklahoma, school for um, um, abused and um, 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 neglected kids. I explain it kindly, Milton Hershey, um, but with a Christian twist, but obviously we are people of faith, so mm -hmm. it's a very, very important part of our life. Um, and we always, personally, I always felt that God had called me to be a head football coach. And I, I definitely had influences from Stephen Lever, who was my head football coach, sure. man of faith as well. So a lot of things I, I, I took from him. I always felt called to you know, you know, to be a high school football coach. So w when we started feeling calling to something else, it was, it was, it was kind of a shift for us. But anyway, so I googled and um, I saw an old posting for a math job, but it was from months ago. And for the next three days, I just felt really bothered. Like I always say, my like spirit, I was bothered by something. And I just felt I should just contact these people and just let them know how wonderful of an organization it is, and not even apply for it. There was no job, so I didn't even apply for anything. Well, he and I back. We kind of went back and forth a little bit, and uh, eventually we ended up figuring out that the job was still open and we like to visit. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to say this is about halfway between in the football season, maybe even late. Okay. So it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't really something that we had thought about even before. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we went in the season preparing. I was even going to come back. There was no thoughts of it. Um, I sat down, spoke to my AD, my principal, mm -hmm. um, just let them know what, what, what was going on just to kind of make them aware. Because I'm a very honest, upfront person. Hey, I said, I don't know where this is going to lead, but I'm just checking in to make sure everybody knows. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, well after the football season in December, we visited. Okay. And um, I always say this, I was five minutes away, and um, I started rattling off the names of the kids that are still in the program here and how much I love them and how much we had grown together and how I couldn't imagine leaving them. Sure. And once we got there, my wife and I looked at each other and we just knew this is where God was calling us to be. Um, so it was a... It, it was it was just it's been an amazing thing in the sense of giving up a dream in terms of being a high school football coach yeah. and doing all the things that from 18 years old this is what I wanted to do and for God to God to kind of shift that to another another thing it was it kind of made us very confident in terms of what we were doing because we're both from here mm -hmm. uh, we're uprooting there's no one lives in Oklahoma we don't know anybody uh, yeah. uh, my, my whole, I mean my whole family is from here so um, what was their reaction when you to tell mom and dad. You know, we're very fortunate that we have very, very supportive families. Mm -hmm. um, again, also faith-based as well. So mm -hmm. I think there's some upsetting. And I, I don't think they really care that we're leaving. I think they're caring about the grandkids more or less. Oh, okay, sure, yeah, that's <laughs> they a big can't, thing. They can't grandkids, mm -hmm. but um, but they have been very, very supportive because I think they have seen all the things that have kind of opened doors for us okay. in terms of them saying, "Hey, you know, this is where God's calling you to be." So you had a revelation. You're driving in your car on your way home, and you just said, I think I want to do this. Let's go. You're young enough, and you have a whole life ahead of you. Things started to kind of fall in terms of the, we were told, if you're going to do it, do it now. Okay. Because we kind of had, like, you know, if we were going to stay or we're going to go, but, like, our kids are young enough that it's a good time to move. You know, we, we didn't want to uproot them when they're in elementary school or high school. They're still sure. you know, the oldest one's three. It's, it's really a good time to do it. Not surprised that you're going to try to start a football program out there. <laughs> did you approach them with that? No, or I they... didn't, actually. That's I think that's the coolest about the story is that when I applied – I had told my wife because you know imagine having I mean then other coaches do it three kids in three years you're I mean I've been head football coach I've had three kids about every year since I've been a football coach yeah. um, and just the hours and especially a program where you're trying to build mm -hmm. it's a lot and yeah. you know all the time and my wife has been so supportive about it um, <clears throat> but <clears throat> we had talked about that you know I was going to give it all up and just be a math teacher down there and also part of the ministry like I'm, I'm a teacher down there but we're going to be working with Bible studies uh, the students there's a whole bunch of things that that guy obviously encompasses and, that, and sure. that's what, and that's what drew us to it um, but we got down there and he was just like well we need a basketball coach and I'm like okay you know yeah, I do that. all right yeah I can do that for <laughs> my ministry and then it was like well we need an AD too and I'm like well I think I 
my attributes can fit that. Mm-hmm. And I guess what had happened is, is sometime in the, the previously, they had soccer was in the fall, which was the main sport there because it was the like, you know cost like here co- before football came cost around. efficiency in terms of soccer is a cheaper sport than football. Let's mm-hmm. be honest with you. So they had run that. Well, I guess a number of the schools in Oklahoma, the Christian schools, because fo- football's crazy down there yeah. in terms of Texas, Oklahoma, so they shifted the soccer season to the spring, so they don't have a fall season for for a boys sport. So it was mentioned. He's like, yeah, we were kind of looking into it. Mm-hmm. Didn't think anything of it. Mm-hmm. And then a couple of weeks ago, he contacted me and was just like, hey, we think we can get this done. Mm. Do you think, would you want be something to do? And I kind of chuckle about it because it was amazing that I gave up these things that, truly for me, that were my dreams. Mm. But I thought God was calling me to do it and now he's given it back twofold. Now I'm a basketball mm. coach and a football coach and an AD. So all these things that you kind of think about, think about doing, but you never really expect it, especially once you give it up. So that's where, again, we thought, boy, God really is leading us here that we're able to do all, do kind of all the things we ever, like, we ever dreamed or even thought of. So you are going to coach hoops and you'll be the athlete director yeah but now mind you there's only like three or four sports so let's not okay. so it's not like there's right. four but you know what i mean and that's things that we i had to worry about because my goal this is a family move as well for our sure. children for our oh, family yeah. um but yeah it's not like i'm like you know i have like 20 sports there are only three or four sports okay. and any way that i can help the ministry and i think that's for whatever what i'm bringing to them is kind of what they need right now okay. like more of an athlete obviously you know athletics in terms of that way i know the director's been the athletic director i think taking that off his shoulders you know, okay. hopefully I'll be able to do a, a good job and hopefully uh, you know just um, really whatever I can do to help the ministry and obviously use sports for these type of kids right. to make a positive influence on them how many kids are in the school currently, currently? there's 85 K through 12 that is okay. I don't know the exact number in the high school um, they are the goal is it has grown though exponentially in the past couple of years it was down to about 30 kids a couple of years ago okay. so they are growing the ministry which is a wonderful wonderful thing how anxious are you for that challenge you had a challenge here when you showed up <laughs> and you guys are it won some games and did a lot of great things you're going out there and they had nothing, nothing. <laughs> their ground yeah. ground floor you know, literally the, the only thing i say to that is i i and i have to i've said this a number of times i think it will be not easier but it's different in terms of where when we got to pv they had already had the program, but there were such negative thoughts mm. from the program because people said, you, you, you know, you can't win there, you can't do this here. Mm. You know, I always said, sometimes it would have been easier to just start over, just to just start a new program because yeah. you didn't have the negative. Yeah. The going there, we're fortunate that the schools we were going to play predominantly, I guess a bunch of small Christian schools got together and they're also starting programs. Mm. So a lot of the schools we're going to be playing are starting programs as well. Okay. So that's so you're kinda, on the same level kind of. You got of, it. Yeah. Like here, it was like, you know, my first year, we're like, all right, section three football. I'm mm. thinking back in 2001, like where there was more of a population gap in mm. terms of in section three. Mm. <laughs> first year, Catholic wins the double A districts and, yeah. and, uh, and uh, LS wins the triple A <laughs> district. Thoughts. I'm just like, where the heck am I? I'm like, oh my gosh, what would I walk into? Um, so I think there were a couple of things like that. I think it's, and that's beneficial for the school and the program mm-hmm. down there itself is that, you know, they're going to be on comparable, comparable lines with other schools, which is critically important, especially when you're starting a program. Sure. Um, and I like the fact that it's more of a ministry aspect. We're doing this for the kids in terms of teaching and you know, especially you know you know especially boys of this type you know who whether they don't have father figures or they struggle you know football is a great tool to teach them life lessons mm-hmm. so that's kind of what we're really focusing in on last one you played here you coached here I can't believe you're leaving. But <laughs> just having been around here and, and played in this and coached in this league, how's, how's that prepared you for what you've done and where you're going? You know, I think just the people, I think, of the LL League, and, and that's why it was the hardest to leave, is just how, how supportive they always have been. I have numerous stories, and just not about Garden Spot, like the people at Garden Spot. I mean, from, from like other schools. Like, when I was at track, I would go to other schools, like tents, and like they would give me waters and Gatorades and like, you know, football, everyone being supportive, speaking kindly about me. Like, like, um, you know, I know numerous people when I was getting recruited would just like would, would, just, would just throw my name out. He's a great kid, and I remember just coaches come up, hey, we're trying to help you out. Mm-hmm. And that's been the feel as it always has been. Like, I, I just I thanked all the coaches. You know, I was a young coach when I got this job mm-hmm. for all the help. And I mean, anytime you need anything, everyone is just so supportive in the LL League. And um, they, you know, 23 years old being a head football coach, uh, the learning curve is just exceptional. Mm-hmm. Um, and hopefully, I can take all the values and all that kind of helpfulness that I can take down to down to there, and hopefully help with the kids. And, and hope with, and hopefully help with this um, with this ministry in terms of how that goes. But uh, I said it's bittersweet leaving the only place you've ever ever known, and especially the place that you that you really do love. Like I love Lancaster County, I love the LL League, and uh, my wife and I we always say, you know, in my heart of hearts, hopefully God will lead us back here at some point. It, but it, again, that has to be His will because like I said we do love it here, and and I would love to come back home and hopefully help out the people in my um, um, uh, community.